In this video, I want to teach you how to make this piece. It's inspired by the Hunger Game Catching Fire, the one that Katniss wear at the beginning of the show. This one is done a crochet. I made one uh, knitted and I have a few petitions on how to make one in crochet because it's a lot of you guys that don't know how to knit. And I decided to make one and this is the result. I hope you guys like it. It's very easy to make. Any beginner can make this piece if you follow my step-by-step -step detailed video. And I hope you like it and give it a try. And here is the list of materials you're going to need to make this beautiful piece. To make this uh, cowl or neck warmer inspired by uh, the Hunger Game Catching Fire, the one that Katniss wear at the beginning of the movie, I'm going to use this yarn. I made one with this yarn, but was a knitted one. And I have a few requests on how to make one with a crochet. So I'm going to use the same yarn. It's Lion Brand yarn. Well, easy. Thick and quick. It's 170 gram. Super bulky six. And said that you can use up to a 9 millimeter crochet hook. And I'm going to use an 11.50 millimeter or a P. And the color is gray marble. So I'm gonna use this one exactly the same as the one that I used for the one that I knit. To start, I'm gonna do slip knot. So see now that I forgot to mention, you need some markers or uh, safety pins to mark and. Um, a tapestry needle. That's something else you have, I forgot to mention in the beginning of the list of things that you will need. I'm gonna make 30 chains. This is for size large. If you want to make this smaller, you'll have to do 27 or 24. Have to be uh, a number of chain that you can divide in three parts the same. So I'm going to make 30. That will be 10, 10, and 10 for me. So I'll continue doing my chain until I have my 30 chains. Here I have my 30 chains. Now I'm going to chain one more to turn my work around. And then the second chain from the hook, I'm going to do a single crochet. So I'm going to do 30 single crochet. This is my first time working with this needle. It's a little slippery, but it's really nice to work with because the work goes really fast. So I will meet you here when I have my 30 single crochet. Here I have my 30 single crochet. I'm going to chain 3, turn my work around, and now we're going to do a double crochet in top of each single crochet. That one count as the first one. And now we're going to be working in the back strand of yarn of each stitch. Okay, just like that. All in the back. And there's double crochet. When we finish the row, this row, we'll have 30 double crochet. You have to make sure that you have 30. Just like that. Only in the back one, like that. So I'll meet you here at the end. Here we're going to do the last stitch, and instead to grab one strand, we're going to grab both. Okay? And we're going to do our double crochet. And there we finish our second row, and you'll end with your row like this. Now you're going to chain one, turn your work around, and you're going to do one with both strands. Always the la first one or the last one, you grab both of them. You're going to do a single crochet. Now you're going to grab one strand of yarn, just the back strand, a single crochet. And you have to have 30. Again, single crochet at the end of this row. And this side will be like this. 
and in this one like that. So I'll meet you here at the end of this row. And this one is the third row. Here I'm gonna do the last one, I'm grabbing the two strands, do a single crochet and chain one and turn my work around. Now I'm gonna divide it, my work in three parts the same. 10, 10, and 10. Okay? So I'm gonna do it off camera and then I'll be right back. Here I ask you to do one chain to turn around. Now do two more for a total of three. And that counts as the first double crochet. Now you're gonna do one double crochet on top of each single crochet. This one counts as the first one on top of that one, so go to the next one. And in the back strand of yarn, you're gonna do your second double crochet. And each time you start a row, it's always in the back strand of yarn, either it's a double or a single crochet. So you're gonna do your 10 double crochet till the marker. So I'll meet you here when I finish to show you what to do next. Now I finished with my 10. And then I put the marker in the front strand of yarn and left the back empty. And that one we're going to do two double crochet together. We're going to increase on the middle of the piece. Now we're going to do one. And the next one two. And like that you're going to increase until you get to the marker. When you get to the marker, you will start doing just one uh, double crochet on top of each single crochet for a total of 10 without any increases. Here I finish with a double crochet and you're gonna chain one, turn your work around and you're gonna grab these two strands and do one single crochet in there and now with the back strand you're gonna do one single crochet on top of each single crochet. In this row we don't go to increase or decrease or anything. You only go to increase in the ones that are double crochet. So you, this one is going to do it just like that. One on top of each one. And remember all is in the back. So I'll meet you here at the end of this row. Here I move my marker. I count my 10 uh, stitches. I put the marker. And this time I come from this end here and put the marker because in the middle we always going to have more because we do an increases in the middle. So I chain three. Now that counts as the first double crochet. And now I'm going to do my other nine double crochet. And remember in the back strand of yarn. And then when I get to the marker, when I finish my ten, I will show you what to do on the middle stitches. Here I have my 10 double crochet and now I'm in the marker with my next one start and there I'm going to do two double crochet together. One separate and two together. Like that, we're going to continue doing one separate and two together until we get to the marker. When we get to the marker, we will do our 10 uh, double crochet without any increases. Here I'm going to finish this row. And now, I'm going to do my row single crochet. Till the end. One single crochet on top of each single crochet. So I'll meet you here at the end of this row. Now in this row we're going to do something different. Now we're going to count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 and 10. And the number 11, that is the first one, we put the marker. And I did the same on the other side. Here in this row, that is, um, this row was, the last row was a single crochet. Now we're going to do another row of single crochet. And that will be row number 8. 1, 2, 
three, four, five, six, seven. Row number eight, we will do again another row of single crochet. And we're going to do the increases exactly the same, but with single crochet. So I'll do my ten single crochet, and then I'll get there. Here I have my ten single crochet. Now we're going to do exactly like we are increasing two together, but this time with single crochet, one separate. Two together, one separate. Like that we will do or increase until the marker. Now after the marker we do one single crochet on top of each single crochet. I finished this row of single crochet and that was a row with the increase. And now I'm going to chain three. Now we're going to do a row of double crochet without any increase. Remember until now all the double crochet will be increasing on them but now and this one we are not. And this is row number nine. Yes, a single, a double crochet and top of each single crochet in the back strand. So I will meet you here at the end. Now we finish this row. We're going to chain three. Then we'll work around. I already placed my marker 10 stitch in here and 10 stitch in here. Now I'm going to do another double crochet and top of each double crochet in the back strand of yarn. But this time in this row we're going to do increases again. It will be exactly the same after you do your 10 double crochet, you will do two together, one separate, two together, one separate until the end. Then I will meet you here at the end of this row. And remember, when you get to the marker, you will do your 10 without increases. I finished row number 10. For row number 11, we are going to chain 3 again. And we're going to do a double crochet on top of each double crochet. Without any increase. All the way to the end. Just like that. I finished here this row. And I'm going to do exactly the same again. And here I finished with my first ball of yarn and now I'm going to attach my second one and I hope I have enough to finish the project. Here I wanted to show you how you're going to attach the two yarn together. A way that will be easy, that way you don't have to lose any tail. You have in your left hand the yarn that you are using from the piece that you're working and in the right hand the yarn that you're going to attach, the new yarn. So you're going to cross them in the bottom like that, the one in your right under the one in the left. Now you're going to grab the one and your right hand, you're going to pass it over your thumb and through the back and that one there and through the middle of the two of them. You're going to hold it right there like that and you're going to pass the one that is in your right inside that circle that was forming there. Now you're going to hold the two tails and you're going to pull the yarn in your right side. And like that, you just have a knot that don't go anywhere. You can cut your yarn as short as you want, that way you don't see the seam. And that's it. You have your knot done and you don't want to see that. Now we're going to start the next row, we're going to chain three, turn our work around, and it's time to do some increases, so we have to count our ten spaces, and we're going to move the marker. Now we're going to start with our ten double crochet, and we're going to repeat this one more time. Uh, the double crochet, we're going to come back with the row of double crochet without any... Um, increase we do this one with the increase and one yes one and each top of each one of them 
After you finish that, you're going to measure yourself or the person that you're making this, if it's for an adult. But if it's for a younger person, you have to make last row. Uh, and measure as you go. This piece, remember, cadmus piece is not to cover the whole chest. It's only half of the chest that cover the front piece. So if this piece that you're making is uh, from one shoulder, because already making the sleeve, if from one shoulder and go all the way to the si other side of your neck, where you can start making a collar, and then you stop there. Okay? And then that will be that part done, and then we start with the top part. So you measure after you do this row and another one, you will measure the piece on yourself or the person that you are making this. Um, remember, it just pass your neck to the other side. Here you're gonna end with a piece like this. I love the design of the stitch that I made, and with the thick yarn, it looks beautiful. And now, after I did that row of increases, I did one more row without any increase. So now I'm going to count how many rows I did and we'll let you know. I have 13 rows in total, counting every single row of a uh, single crochet. And remember the row chain, you don't count as any row. Because I had some people ask me before if you count the chains and uh, you don't count the chains. At least on my work, I don't count the chains of any row. Uh, so let's continue with our work. You're gonna leave a big enough opening for your collar. Um, for my shoulder, it's only one shoulder. I'm gonna sew row um, one, two, three, four, and the, when I start the fifth row, that is the row of Single crochet, I will sew until there. I recommend when you start with the chains in the beginning to leave a tail long enough to sew the little piece. I done it left long enough, so I had to get a piece of yarn and sew that with a different piece of yarn. That way, you don't have to cut this yarn attached here. You will continue working with that from there. So I recommend to leave when you do the first slip knot. To leave a tail long enough for sewing. So remember, for mine, I'm gonna sew after row in row number five. That is the row of single crochet. Here I'm gonna sew with this plastic needle that they sell for some with some tools for doing projects. Sometimes they sell them just the needle because my regular tapestry needle is too uh, small the hole for this thick yarn. I have my piece of yarn attached, so I'm going to come to the other side where I have no tails. I'm going to pass my yarn. And if you don't left a long enough tail, you're going to attach those two tails, you're going to do a knot there. So I will do my off camera and I'll meet you here after that. Here you're going to sew in a zigzag, but remember if you only have you left a long enough tail, you don't have to lose any tail later in this part of the arm. You just sew and then we'll lose the tail in here. Now you have to match every stitch to, a to the other stitch on the other side. Every single crochet to a single crochet and the double crochet to the double crochet. So you're going to sew in a zigzag, making sure that you match every stitch. And here at the end, you're going to double, do a double, and the end, that way this stitch don't get loose in here. And then from there you lose your tail. To continue the piece, now we're going to do the top part for the color. I finished here this row, and I still have my yarn attached. I'm going to come to the other side. You see, this is the right side. I'm going to come to the other side. This is the opening. And I'm going to come here. And I'm gonna do in the top of this chain here in the corner, I'm gonna do a slip stitch. And like that, we close this piece. And we're gonna chain one, and we're gonna do a single crochet in every space all the way around. We're working now 
in the round. That way we don't have to sew in the color together. So I'll meet you here at the end at this row. Here you're going to finish this row with the slip stitch on the first single crochet. You're going to chain three. And now you're going to do a double crochet on top of each single crochet in the back strand of yarn. And this one count as the first one in that slip stitch, uh, in that first stitch that we did there. So I'll meet you here at the end of this row. And remember, in the back strand, and a double. Just like that. Here we're going to finish this row with a slip stitch and a stitch on the third chain. We're going to chain one. And here in the first one, just right there that you see, you're going to do your first single crochet in the back strand of yarn. And like that, you're going to do this row. So I'll meet you here at the end. Here I finish this row with a slip stitch on top of the first chain that we did. Now we're going to chain three. And we're going to do a double crochet again in those back strands. And this is row number three. Here is uh, so far what I'm done for the color. I finish it with a slip stitch. And if you want it a little bit um, higher, you can do one more row of single crochet. I'm going to try mine right now to see if it, this is enough. I really like the way it looks. I like this row of single crochet like that. In there. Uh, okay, I will try it on and I'll let you know if that's it for mine. I'm going to cut my yarn and lose the tail because this is exactly the length that I want to give the, or the height of my um, color. That was fourth row, one row of single crochet, one of double crochet, a single crochet and a double crochet. If I do a little longer and then it will bend and then you don't going to see the design on the piece in here. So I'm going to lose my tail and I'll show you the end result. Here I wanted to show you how you're going to finish the last row. For those beginners that want to do this piece and don't know how to finish, I finished it with a slip stitch. And now I'm going to chain one, cut the yarn, and lose that tail. Well, here is the end result. This is the front part. It looks amazing. I love the design of the stitch. It looks really nice. And I hope you guys get inspired by And now I'm going to show you the back part. That way you see that uh, if look exactly the same as the front. Here's the back part and it looks exactly the same as the front. I made this piece in no time and I used two balls of yarn uh, 170 gram each. Just a little bit left of the last one. So if you use the same type of yarn with two balls, it will be enough. So I hope you guys give you the thumbs up if you like it. Subscribe to my channel if you are not already a subscriber. And have a beautiful day. Bye.